is Professor Jim Cathy, and today we are going to do one of my favorite chapters, chapter 13, on comets and asteroids, debris in the solar system, and we will get started. In the 1990s, we had two very uh, big comet appearances. Hale Bopp was one of them that was known to occur for a couple of years before its peak. We have many asteroids in the solar system, most of them between Mars and Jupiter, but also many that go around Jupiter and near Earth. We find different types of asteroids depending on what they are made of, at different distances from the sun. Here is a small chunk of the meteorite that is identified as a volcanic fragment from the asteroid Vesta. So we have been able to recover meteorite fragments. We do this quite often. Here are three asteroids that we have taken images of. Very neat. Here is an asteroid with a moon, Ida and Dactyl. Here are two moons of Mars, Phobos and Deimos. We have looked at images of arrows. This is another asteroid that appears to have no craters at all. This dramatic image shows the Hibusa probe breaking up upon re-entry. Here are two minor planets, Vesta and Ceres. White spots in a crater on Ceres. One of the, used to be an asteroid, now it is a dwarf planet. We have seen impacts with Earth. About a hundred years ago, an object exploded a few miles above the Siberian forest of Teganska, and it set off fireworks all the way to London. We have discovered many near-Earth asteroids. However, on the Earth, there's only a handful of astronomers funded to actually look for the uh, appearance of a Earth-destroying asteroid. We can see most of them pretty far in advance, but we don't have that many people looking for them. This is where our astronomy community and amateurs comes alive. And many amateurs have big telescopes and can look for those kinds of objects. Many amateurs uh, are especially trained for that kind of thing. So our astronomy community, amateur and professional, works together to gather data. This is a near-Earth asteroid, and it doesn't look very impressive on the surface, but when you think about it, this is radar beams interpreting a surface. So they do have some limitations, but that's one way we look at near-Earth asteroids. <clears throat> in 1910, and again in 1986, Comet Halley came by. I was not that impressed when I saw it in 1986 from Missouri. 
I don't need to do that. Um, let's go ahead and come back in 2061. And so some of us will be able to see it then maybe. Although I suspect it will not be a big show again. Edwin Halley was a prolific contributor to the sciences. Parts of a comet have a tiny nucleus, a coma around the nucleus of excited gas and atmosphere, along with two tails, an ion tail straight out, and a dust tail curving away. Comet's motion is from the dust tail. Comet to the sun is from the ion tail, which proves that ion tail was made by wind from the sun. Here is a piece of comet dust. We have sent a couple of spacecraft to gather cometary dust, which could be the building blocks of our solar system. A close-up of Comet Halley. The head of Comet Halley in 1986. I think Comet Halley might have been really nice to see in the desert southwest, uh, but in Missouri, on the dark side, not so much. Comet's tails will turn and go away from the sun all the time. That comet tail away from the sun. I have a, uh, a nice image gallery here at my house where I've got uh, over my shoulder that one. I've got a comet wall of comet images that I have taken over the years. Uh, named that dog back there, Comet Kathy. So I am pretty much in love with comets, and we will study comets in the discussion this week. Here is a comet 67P, Comet 67P, as seen from Rosetta. Gas jets on this comet seen by the Rosetta spacecraft. And if you look carefully, you can see jets coming out, heated up. Shirin's orbit goes around the sun every 50 years. And one of the four founders of the study of the four other regions of the solar system, Jan Oort, here first suggested there might be a reservoir of frozen chunks, possible comets frozen at the edge of the solar system. Here is David Levy, many in the amateur astronomy community know David and his work. Many professionals, well I'm sure every professional knows David Levy and he is well likened to be a, a professional astronomer on many levels. Um, but he is ranked third in the world for comet discoveries. Really a nice guy. We saw a comet called Linear break up. We have seen another comet break up in the past as well. Comet Shoemaker DB9 that hit Jupiter right on cue. Here it is. A string of 
fragments and the impacts in the infrared seen here. These are heat signatures of fragments of comets exploding in Jupiter's atmosphere in 1994. I got to see that event in Missouri. And the last slide we'll see is one of the biggest impact features. This is probably impact feature G, as in George, taken by my friend Heidi Hamill at MIT, and now with the Space Science Institute in Colorado. That dot in the middle of that cloud is dark. The dot in the middle is the size of just one Earth. So we need more people to look for those asteroid and comets that might hit the Earth so we don't turn into one of those dots. And with that, I'll leave it to you for now for chapter 13, and we'll join you on chapter 14 next. Well, did you enjoy that episode of 10 Minute Astronomy? If so, check out all the other videos in that playlist for 10 Minute Astronomy and other videos on my channel, and then hit the subscribe button right there. Thanks.